please close your eyes and join me with the chanting setting up your intentions motivations to join in the learning process sadhu 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 namo tassa bhagavato arhato सम्मास नमो तस् भगवत अर्थ सम्मासबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवत अर्थ सम्मासबुद्ध बुद्धंगच्छामि धम्मी दुती गी ती बुद्ध गी तती धम्म गी तती संघं गी पानी पातामि सिखापद सी आदिना वेरमि सिखापद सी कामेशु मिच्छाचार वेरमि सिखापद सी मुसावाद वेरमि सिखापद सी सुरय मज्जपम दट्ठना वेरमि सिखापद सी साधु 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 I invite you to join me in this guided meditation session. For a brief time before our discussion, take a deep breath in and release slowly, gently. becoming aware of your silence breathe in breathe out relaxing the upper part of your body simply inhaling and exhaling with awareness and attention
your motivations are wholesome and here you deal with anything and everything with kindness allowing dhamma piti the joy of dhamma to arise things that arise and pass away are not to be identified with yourself they are conditioned to arise that way again and again as long as things and awareness exist This awareness is one of the most powerful tools that we can use to have a new meaning in the direction of our existence. when you become aware of superhuman qualities you are headed in that direction conditioning that direction when you become aware of negative things you are easily headed in that direction getting yourself in trouble with generally every experience so you make the conscious choice at some point in life for wholesome states to arise and there you are wondering about what wholesome states that you can cause to arise mind that is free from lobe greediness mind that is free from dosa aversion mind that is free from delusion moha lobe dosa moha greed aversion and delusion that is wholesome so when you pay wise attention yoniso manasikara
you can identify wholesome states and cultivate them. To learn about wholesome states and unwholesome states, we are here in the discussion this evening. Inhaling and exhaling is the only simple activity that we chose to do as a way of relaxing this mind and the body. May the inspiration I gain from reading Dhamma benefit me and all sentient beings. May I not surrender to unwholesome states but be motivated by wholesome states of my mind. May I, when I feel discouraged, dull, lazy, unmotivated, May my spiritual friends not judge me, provide me wise advice. May I also be a light for them. May I feel encouraged to ask questions contribute to the discussion with my thoughts and what may be unknown to us as yet. May we be free from ignorance May light of wisdom arise in this room. Inhale and exhale. With awareness supporting this body and the environment. Please lower your expectations. That will help you in learning process. <clears throat> Enjoy some quiet moments before we begin our discussion today.
so who are here for the first time you are here for the first time so and just for your knowledge we do this discussion on every monday uh, less meditation but more discussion but if you came with the intention to do more meditation i or we welcome you to our wednesday sitting where we do more meditation and less discussion um and also on saturday mornings we have a discussion uh, well, a meditation not discussion um at 8:30 in the morning until 9:30 one hour just like today one hour chunk of the day and that is also enjoyed by some people who are early risers in our community okay so we have three pieces printed so this is about mental factors that's what we are going to discuss and this is a thought we had as a group some of us were talking about this for a long time but never got into it but i decided okay with no much preparation as a group we can try to perhaps simplify uh what is there for us in terms of understanding 52 mental factors and why they why learning about them is important like sometimes you may think every thought is rooted in greed or every thought is rooted in delusion but maybe not so we are going to find out in our reading today so this is going to be basically a reading to make us all become acquainted with the content and facilitate you in your learning of dhamma the teachings and also to motivate you not to discourage you in learning about the philosophical aspects the profound teachings of the buddha so i have given you three pieces one is from just the first page of a 24 pages introduction to dhamma sangani that's what you saw when you first came and and i immediately said no we are not going to do that <laughs> dhamma sangani for your knowledge is the first bo- book of abhidhamma of one of you know it it has seven seven books and this is the first one but before they talk about the seven books they give an introduction to what abhidhamma means which we have done before in our previous one of the wednesday discussions so i want you to begin with that first okay shall we read the term abhidhamma can be rendered literally as higher or special teaching of the buddha so that part you know right higher or special teaching of the buddha abhidhamma is in fact a profounder treatment of the teaching of the buddha dealing with ultimate realities namely mind chitta mental concomitants chetasika matter or corporeality rupa and nibbana so let's stop there for a moment what this says is it deals with ultimate realities so there is reality and ultimate realities how can you look at mind in terms of reality and what is the ultimate way to look at it the the most subtle way to look at it is that a way you would put it yeah so 
and there are four things in here mind so mind I like to I, ju- I was listening to one of the Tibetan American nuns but ordained in the tri- Tibetan tradition and she likes to look at mind in the plural mind not as a single thing but in the plural something that has so many things in it that's what we mean by mind in the plural it makes sense because we say mind in the singular but as soon as you understand different consciousnesses and different mental concomitants but some people translate it differently as we will find out later in our other readings let's not go there so mind has different things that's the idea basically so mind is one ultimate reality mental concomitants is another ultimate reality things that the mind has and materiality matter is one ultimate reality so matter can be divided into different elements ultimately and that's ultimate some people say four essentials right four essentials what's the way Pujita Mahatma put it once four essential huh yes but he didn't like the word elements because he has studied 52 something of elements <laughs> so that bothered him <laughs> four essential elements I think that's how you put it once right or oh, it will come to your mind later I don't want you to think too much about that right now and the last final one single thing is Nibbana the translator did not even attempt to translate it they left it as Nibbana <laughs> the final goal of Buddhism uh, how do we translate that if you were to think uh, cessation that is Niroda cessation extinguishing, extinguishing. good ultimate happiness good enlightenment good return to the one one. very good absence of of greed hatred and delusion yes it's even more confusing right (laughs) (laughs) it's getting interesting So any questions on that line before we go? Four ultimate realities. That's all we learned there. (coughs) Why they are ultimate? When you try to break reality into the most essential ones in the Buddhist language, this is where we stop. But in each of them, you have more classifications, except for Nibbana nobody tries to break it nobody tries to say it is a place nobody says it's a heavenly place that you go not a city even the Buddha himself says there's no darkness there there's no uh, sun no moon no stars if you read Bahya Sutra, that's what you find. Bhante Sankhicha did a wonderful discussion on that. So, ultimate realities. Okay. Of these four, let's read more. Of these four, the first three are compounded and conditioned. But Nibbana is the only ultimate reality which is uncompounded and unconditioned. What do you think is compounded and uncompounded means? But conditioned you understand, right? Conditioned and unconditioned. Nibbana does not have a cause to arise. Meet. 50% brain to understand that but what is compounded 
so yes it has i would say it's clustered grouped combined put together put stuff together very good they arise together and pass away when those things that arose disappear but nibbana is unconditioned and uncompounded it doesn't have things put together and no conditions for it to arise when so in simple terms you meditate you make right conditions but those conditions will give you that awakening understanding and you you have the direct knowledge that you have understood it according to the scripture not from my experience you have the direct knowledge that you have attained nibbana based on your previous development and then there you realize that there is no more no more further becoming no more continuation no more existence and you can stop there and argue about nietzsche marx right and all these philosophers but no we are not going to go there in this book well this is a book i shared with you uh, i'm going to discuss with you in mind and consci- i'm not i don't have the whole book here but this is a you know the title is that introduction to dhamma sangani mind and consciousness are both used for chitta okay chitta can be translated as mind or consciousness that's the meaning of it the term thought includes both chitta and chetasikas so when you say a thought you can put both chitta and chetasika where did you see chetasika and you see the first ultimate realities first two is chitta and chetasika mind and mind concomitants so when you say thought it includes both the mind and mind concomitants that's what this sentence is trying to say <clears throat> okay then continue on reading the buddha expounded his teachings with only one object means objective mainly the attainment of nibbana but the presentation varies according to varying occasions and circumstances so different times he gave different teachings in suttanta discourses the buddha takes into consideration the intellectual level of his audience and teaches the dhamma in conventional terms making reference to peoples and objects such as i v he she man woman cow tree etc but in abhidhamma the buddha makes no such concessions he treats the dhamma entirely in terms of ultimate realities he analyzes every phenomenon into its ultimate constituents all relative concepts such as man mountain etc are reduced to their ultimate elements which are then precisely defined classified and systematically arranged this is why people put it away sometimes for people don't like learning maths so likewise they don't really look at um these analysis but you kind of get the idea here that conventionally we use i me even the buddha used that those words conventionally to to so you know to live in the society you need those terms you know one of the writers in sri lanka martin vikramasinghe you know has said in one of his books that you have to live according to the current society or else you should die 
<laughs> Why he said that is that sometimes if you try to interpret everything in ul ultimate realities, nobody will try to understand you. you. They try to keep you away from any conversation and you are now isolated, you deal with your mind and they, they go on with the conventional world. So you make a choice here. If you want, you can go into ultimate realities and analyze it, analyze it that way or if you want to just study the sutras, discourses, as they said, suttanta, then there you find most conventional ways of dealing with day-to-day -day stuff and teachings based on conventional terms. But when you come to Abhidhamma, you find things like Nibbana, things like talking about ultimate realities, the four ultimate realities that we just read. So that's why it has to be analyzed. Any questions there? Okay, let's go on. Thus, in Abhidhamma, compounded and conditioned things are expressed in terms of khandas, means mental and physical aggregates, ayatanas means sense bases, dhatus means elements, indriya means faculties, satcha fundamental truths and so on. So in Abhidhamma you find what? Mental and physical aggregates. Do I have to explain that or should I just leave it? Think aggregates. What are the aggregates? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Formations. Consciousness. We work as a team. Well done. <laughs> and sense bases, what are those? How many are those? Six. Six. Okay. Looks like you have listened to or read some. That, that's what I wanted to know. What are those? I. I. Yeah. Tongue, body, mind. Yes. Did you say all the six? You have. You can. You know. Classify them into internal and external. Right. How? Do, what is that means? Internally, you have the list that you said, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and the mind. Externally, what you cognize from them. Visual form, Visual form sounds, those are external. Do you get that? Okay, I see the question mark on your face. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. <laughs> and elements, what are the elements? Why you say colony for that? Did you say colony? Quality. Quality, okay. Yeah. Uh, or element. Um, earth element. Yeah. Water element. Water element. And wind element. Thank you. Air element, right? So, good. We are good. And uh, faculties. What are those? I think we just did that. Like eye faculty, ear faculty, etc. And truths, like Four Noble Truths, right? Things denoted by conventional terms such as man, woman, etc. are resolved into ultimate components like khandas, ayatanas, etc. and viewed, viewed as impersonal, so that's deep wisdom there, not personal, they are impersonal, mental and physical phenomena. All you can experience is mental and physical phenomena, which are conditioned by various factors and are impermanent, basically impermanent. They don't last forever. There is no lasting essence <coughs> and subject to suffering. When you cling to them and want them to be your way, and they don't, therefore they are subject to suffering and without an entity 
without an entity means anatta, impermanent, suffering and no self, no lasting self. Or at least you can look at it that way. And then your view about self is changed. All right. <coughs> And then I want you to uh, go to the part I have highlighted here on the other pa other side. So the passage before that talks about how the sutras look at things, just the conventional way. It also has some Abhidhammic teachings, but specifically in this chapter, let's read that together to the end and then we look at other stuff. But the Abhidhamma approach is more thorough, more penetrating, describing each corporeal or mental phenomenon in ultimate terms. For example, in the summarized presentation of the Abhidhamma, known as Abhidhammata Sangaha, compiled in Sri Lanka in the 5th century AD by the Venerable Anuruddha, consciousness is described as consisting of 89 kinds, mental concomitants as consisting of 52 kinds, corporeality as consisting of 28 kinds, and Nibbana as the single uncompounded element, Asankhata Dhatu. According to the Abhidhamma method of analysis or Abhidhamma Bhajaniya, each description can be amplified much further. Okay, so there you learn about a book which is called Abhidhamma Sangaha. Uh, written in the 5th century AD by a monk named Venerable Anuruddha. It's now translated into English by Bhikkhu Bodhi and is freely available for you to read online. If you just Google it, you'll find it. And it says here that summarized presentation is or it has consciousness in 89 kinds. So 89 consciousnesses. So when you look at consciousness, there are 89 consciousnesses that you can name. <coughs> the question is, do we need to know all of them? No. But we now know that that's one way they have classified it. And then it says mental concomitants or mental factors are 52 kinds. That's what I wanted to discuss today. That's this and that. <coughs> and then it says corporeality means rupa, the physicality, right? Which is consisting of 28 kinds. Okay. So now you see there are so many things to learn. So we need to slow down and be patient in our learning when we study something like this and just try to have fun anyway. <laughs> That's what we have and then this introduction I think we can say goodbye to it for now. <laughs> you see this side I had to go specifically color print this from outside I didn't want you to give a black and white printout so that you don't see the colorfulness of it it's fun to see colors <laughs> so the 52 mental factors you see that on the top right 52 there's no Pali in the printed version I gave you I put some Pali for me because that helps me to look at them and you see some in white circles, some in orange circles, some in little bit dark red and uh, purple and yellow and orange again. So these 
are different colors that correspond to the other side of the page. At least if you can see clearly in this light conditions, at least there are, they have tried to color them according to these colors that they have put, like little bulbs here. And what we will first do is to read the list. Do you think it's a good step fo forward? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Should we read Pali and English? Sure. Or just English first? Oh, I will read it and then you also read after me. Is that good? Yeah. Pasa. Contact. Vedana. Vedana. Feeling. Sanya, perception, chetana, intention, ekagata, one-pointedness, jivitindriya, life faculty, manasikara, attention. So they are called universal mental factors. Say that please. We will know why they are universal in our discussion after this. Vitakka, initial thought. Vichara, sustained thought. Adhimokka, determination. Virya, energy. Piti, rapture, chand, wish. So those are called occasional mental factors. Thank you. Number fourteen, moha, delusion, ahirika, shamelessness, anutappa. Moral fearlessness, fearlessness. Uddhacha Restlessness Lobha Greed Ditti Wrong view Mana Conceit Dosa Hatred Issa Envy Macharya, stinginess, kukkucha, worry, remorse, thina, sloth, laziness, midha, torpor, tiredness, vichikicha, skeptical doubt. So all these are unwholesome mental factors, okay? And then you have what we, what they call beautiful mental factors. So number twenty-eight, sadha, sadha. confidence, confidence. Sati, sati, mindfulness, mindfulness. Hiri, hiri, moral shame, moral shame. Uttapa, Uttapa. moral fear. Aloba, non greed, Adosa, non hatred, Tatra Majhatta, that's Tatra Majhatta, so forget about H sound, okay? Tat just sound the J, that's it. Tatra Majatta Ta. Tatra Majatta Ta. Perfect. That is equanimity. Equanimity. Like Madhahat Bhava in Singhala, okay? Kaya Pasadhi. Kaya Pasadhi. Which is tranquility of mental factors. Chitta Pasadhi. Tranquility of consciousness. 
Kaya Lahuta Lightness of mental factors Chitta Lahuta Lightness of consciousness Kaya Muduta It's pliancy, right? Pliancy of mental factors like flexibility, I think. Yeah. Chitta muduta. Pliancy of consciousness. Kaya kamanyata. Adaptability of mental factors. Chitta kamanyata. Adaptability of consciousness. Kaya Pagunyata Kaya Pagunyata Proficiency of Mental Factors Proficiency of Mental Factors Chitta Pagunyata Chitta Pagunyata Proficiency of Consciousness Proficiency of Consciousness Kayuju Kata Kata Rectitude of Mental Factors like straightforwardness. Chittuju kata. Rectitude of consciousness. Samma vacha. Right speech. Samma kamanta. Right action. Samma ajiva. Right livelihood. Karuna, Karuna compassion, compassion mudita, mudita sympathetic joy, sympathetic joy or they say altruistic joy panindriya wisdom faculty so how many of these do you know <laughs> good question <laughs> right <laughs> Well, we all have all these. Yeah. No question. Yeah, all, <laughs> right. <laughs> we have the good, but we don't cultivate them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we know we should, but we kind of ignore them. <laughs> right. <clears throat> and now, like you concentrate on something and you can sustain it. Yes. Ekagrata is a singular word. But you may have forgotten Singhala. <laughs> but she has lived away enough that she forget some Singhala. <laughs> Ekagrata is Pali, but Ekagrata is Singhala. So they go very close. Anyway, yes. Take a breath. <laughs> Yes, at least we know that these are the 52. That's all I need you to know for now. <clears throat> Mind states? Feelings are the most prominent, so we tend to notice them easily. But in feelings, you may find things that are common to everything also. That's why now we need to look at the other side and see how to classify them. Yes. Yes. So when you look at, so you see in the center, if you look at the other side, the colored side, in the center, you have a set of unwholesome 14. 14 of them are unwholesome. And in that, there are some numbers that are in related to anger. But here they say hatred group. Okay? <coughs> say, for example, there is number 21. Please go back to number 21 and see it's dosa. Hatred. Right? 
and then you go to the other number which is number 22 to 24 what are those so hatred envy stinginess worry and remorse why are they anger related when you have stinginess right like you are keeping your possessions to your own and you don't want anybody to see them you kind of have aversion when even a guest visiting your house that's like Mata Kundali story the father did not want to give medicine medication to the son and let it let the son die did not use his wealth to treat the son and started crying when the son died so and he had to even keep the son outside of the house when visitors started coming at to see the son who was dying so he 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 was having that aversion toward people who would otherwise go into his house and see how much wealth he had stinginess there is some sense of aversion there right you don't want like don't want that that is aversion not liking exactly does that help Pujita Mahatma <coughs> I know you will say no. <laughs> yes, but before we continue, uh, please take the big print out. It's 8.30 anyway. Um, outline of Abhidhamma, this print out with more pages. And there you have, I put, uh, so it's that part, number two that we are looking at. You see that? And let's read that. So mental factors, cheta sika. There are a total of 52 sub functions of the mind, called mental factors, which cooperate in various configurations to assist consciousness in the knowing of an object. Among these, seven arise in all mind moments and are called universals while six others may or may not be present and are thus called occasionals. These 13 mental factors are ethically variable because they can arise in either wholesome or unwholesome states of mind. How do we get 13? 7 plus 6. Like 7 all my... Okay. Yeah. Universals and occasionals, right? So among these, let's go back there, among these seven arise in all mind moments and are called universals, while six others may or may not be present and are thus called occasionals. Altogether there are 13, right? These 13 mental factors are ethically variable because they can arise in either wholesome or unwholesome states of mind. The next 14 factors are always unwholesome and their presence renders all moments of consciousness containing them unwholesome. So 14 of them are unwholesome and did they say they arise in all? No, let, I need to read that again. The next 14 factors in the list, you will find 14 next and those are always unwholesome. So their nature is to arise with unwholesome nature, that's what it means. And their presence renders all moments of consciousness containing them unwholesome. If any of them are involved, that is an unwholesome state of mind. Okay. Should we look at the chart about the unwholesome so basically if you look at the colored side you have been given un seven universals in the first row first, first column and six occasionals in the second column in the third column under unwholesome 14 that also includes four of the universals in the unwholesome and three of the greed group mental factors and four of the hatred group mental factors 
and three in the category called others. Did you follow me there in that reading? And then you go to the Sobana, the beautiful side. How many do we have? Please say, so I know you are following. 25. Even in there you find how many universals? 19 of them are common, right? Universal. And how many are abstinences? 3. And how many are limitless? Two. Two. How many involve wisdom? One. One. Let's look at number 52 again. It's wisdom faculty. And look at abstinences. Three of them, right? 47 to 49. <coughs> so, right speech. It's about abstaining from wrong speech, right? And then abstaining from wrong action so you do right action and abstaining from wrong livelihood so you do right livelihood <coughs> so there you abst there are abstinences because you abstain from certain things <coughs> so it makes sense that way so at home i want you to play with this yeah factors, mm -hmm. factors. Slow down, please. My brain will not work that fast. <laughs> Under the unwholesome factors, mm -hmm. it says 14. Yes, all together. And the occasional factors are 10. 10. Isn't it the other way around? I don't because know. Because the universals are not unwholesome. They are common to people. Yes. You see, even in the unwholesome 14, you have four of them as universals. Yeah. And then the then added 10 occasionals to them, making them 14. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. you need to see the really bold lines and then ditto lines. To No, doubt is doubting about Yes. Oh. And uh, not no. doubting your husband or anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just meant to say something funny. Not <laughs> not that you <laughs> I think it will Oh yeah, like doubting, but you doubt when you have achieved something, you still doubt. You are not confident there. So it's a, it's a hindrance there for progress. But I think here doubt means that uh, doubt about Dhamma. Yes. Yeah. Doubting even the Buddha is not helpful. <laughs> doubting about Jesus also is not helpful, it's just doubt. <laughs> if you follow, if you are a follower. But we didn't finish the reading the passage, right? That will also answer some of your questions. Where are we actually? These two, what? Unwholesome, right? Can arise in various internal combinations, but the first four of them are always present in every unwholesome mind moment. The final 25 mental factor, facul, factors are always wholesome, called beautiful, and any mind moment containing them will become wholesome by their presence. These two can arise in various combinations involving universal and occasional wholesome factors. An important principle of the system is that wholesome and unwholesome factors can never arise together in the same mind moment. That's, the, that's wisdom for you, that when you know that, I think you can separate wholesome from the unwholesome and make an effort, virya, to cultivate the wholesome and abstain from the unwholesome. Okay, where are we? Yes.
are you looking at the chart? Yeah. Are you looking at this chart? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you're seeing something repeated? No. Oh, because to to shame not doing any evil. You sh you have shame toward doing evil things. You have fear toward doing evil things. So this is Buddhist terminology, right? Buddha encouraged people to have this two thing called hiri and uttappa. So means you have to, when you shy about doing something wrong, you kind of develop it as a good thing. That's why people abstain from doing the wrong. And you also fear doing it. That way it helps you. Because you see, you see the opposite where now you look at 14 and 16, is that, no, 15 and 16, if you look at 15 and 16 you see shamelessness, people don't value other people's lives, shamelessly start shooting, not good, right? That way it is unwholesome. Yes, exactly, and shamelessness and fearlessness. Fearlessness in the sense of you don't fear the karma, so you do anything, even to hurt your parents, you don't fear it, you don't care. Yes? And fear. Yes. And the unwholesome part shows, you know, the wrong. Yes. Doing the wrong. And your mind to do the wrong. Is it unwholesome? Is it occasional? Let's see. Oh, yeah, they are unwholesome. And, yeah, occasional. Six occasionals are also unwholesome. So, yes. So, now you see what to cultivate? Cultivate the 25 beautiful ones? <laughs> Easier said than done, right? <laughs> yeah, our birds. Yeah, we have birds living here. They don't want to leave the temple. Now in the darkness, they don't see very well. And Bhante Sankicha left the door open. They live in his room. <laughs> They land in his room, in his hand, and eat. So, they are very friends. Not with me, but with him, they are very <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, well, I tried to catch them once, and from then, they, well, to put them into his room, actually, from then, they didn't like me. Yeah. <laughs> interesting, right? Now we know. <laughs> there he comes, catching them. <laughs> I think you need the lights turned on so they they see well. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Good observation. Yeah. They are not there, right? Was it? Oh, wrong view. Wrong view is mentioned uh, as number 19. <laughs> Do we find right view here though? Interesting question. Why then? Yeah. It probably is. In that way, you will have to, you will have to go into more than fifty-two, right? The <laughs> <laughs> right view is, is tranquility, it's mental factors, it's pliancy, it's adaptability, it's proficiency, it's rectitude, all those things. 
Exactly. So it's spoken, it's, it's describing it, although it's not naming it as one thing. So it's because you have right view, you, you see these things and it didn't even yeah, land <laughs> as one thing here, I would say. Oh, last 25? No, from, yeah, last 25, yeah. Yeah. You need to have in, in everything? You can guess, but that's right. Yeah. So yes, yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. I think that way. I think that answers the question, right? You have right view. That's why we even look at these, right? Otherwise, we throw them away, shred them, and you don't look at them. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so I have given you. We need to be time conscious too, but we can go on. I live here. I mean, you live at homes and. <laughs> So you have a whole lot of things to look at when you have the time, when you fly, when you, well, not when you drive, please. <laughs> um, my intention was to just read today, to know what is in there, to get an idea of it and let it sink, <laughs> let it sit there. So at least you know when you talk about 52, you know what they are. Um, and didn't we read somewhere that there are 89, 83, what? Uh, yeah, in the first thing we read, we read that consciousness consti consisting of 89 kinds. So if you go to the big printout, and then you have a chart here, the list of all those 89. Okay? I knew some of you may wonder about that. So besides, are they... So those are different, those are different, completely different from the next page, right? The mental factors. That's what we discussed today, the 52 mental factors. So the same list is given there in a half page on the other page, but before that is the 89 in number. <coughs> so gr so the first one, I just for your, prod produces unwholesome karma. Uh, there are 1 to 12. So one of them is greed rooted, but has mental pleasure, but has with mental, with wrong view and unprompted. So this, this is telling you the nature of that consciousness. That, so there are different, so 50, no, 89 aspects of consciousness and you see 89th one is Arahantship. So which is a super mundane, super mundane consciousness level. So there are mundane ones, means belonging to the world, to the human nature and then superhuman nature. See, like 82 is stream entry, so one level, right? Once returning, 83, that's anaga, uh, sakadagami, 84 is non-returning, anagami level, and again, 85 also is arahantship. Oh, that's at, as the path and then as the fruit. Yeah, the same as fruits. <coughs> And 78 to 81, things that you know basically. Spheres, infinite space, infinite consciousness, in nothingness, neither perception nor non-perception. So again, before that, you find the same list as producers of karma and results of karma. See, different ways it has been described. Okay. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Yes, a lot of homework. Please keep them. And um, I w I'm going to send you another one tonight, which is actually homework. It says you what can you do in your studying. You can say, I, that there are somebody says, I don't know who, who wrote it, but it's very detailed. But it says, memorize this before you go to 
further level or just know it is there before you go to the next level it's talking about 52 mental states so it's telling you it's giving you instructions on how to really digest it slowly yes Are they? So Are they not? Eight to thirteen, right? But they're not in every thought. Have you ever been thoughtless? I have. No, but for instance, like like. Do you want to answer that question? It's the description of ordinary and super mundane people and all of their factors and chitta as described by the Buddha. I think so it's cool. common. <laughs> I think that occasional, like, Occas instance, like the 13th chanda or the wish, you have to see something, then you get the wish, right? Otherwise, if you don't see a nice car, you don't get the wish. So, so occasion, if you see a nice car, you like feeling like having it. Otherwise, so you forget it. Because con in, con in contrast to universals, okay, six may or may not be present and are thus called occasionals. Like with every consciousness, they may or may not be present. Mm -hmm. So uh, as a mental factor. So I think your question is why eight to thirteen, 13 mm -hmm. like wish rapture energy determination because uh, sometimes there is energy sometimes there's lack of energy so that chance is described that's the character that they identified right then you can say they are occasionals okay so what do we do next in the next level of our discussion i want your answers to that how do we kind of take this to another step? Do you want to really do homework on this? Uh, mm -hmm. You love to? Great. I'm glad I didn't throw you away like, what's the word, like I didn't uh, uh, dry your passion <laughs> to learn this. What should be our next level? Should we continue reading this at least? <coughs> Okay, so our next stage will be to just bring all these and the other one that I will be sending, you know, maybe I can send an email tonight, right? And then if you have the time, please read that. Uh, if, you, if you don't have, have, if you have not been given the email, your email to me, please give it to me so then I can include you in that list. All right, so... Yes. So, is there a uh, part that interprets this into some practical thing? Uh, yes. So that will give more, you know, thorough understanding of yes. how to put this Which is a good question, and you find it in secondary readers, not, well, secondary writers, not from original writings okay so I read that today that this monk writes say for example when you oh, I'll have to find that again when you talk about um, a play toy right like something that children like to use and you want to know whether it's wholesome or unwholesome to own one then in, in that you can look at all these 52 and then you yourself make that decision practically whether it is wholesome or unwholesome. That Does that answer? So, yeah. yeah. Some yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. 
that's other like without that i think there's no use of doing it right in the first place so we need to somebody needs to think that way too so i think in uh, that's very good question because in the end when you have a thought try to put it into the 52 aspects or 89 levels of consciousness and see whether it's worthy of developing or should you abstain from it but anyway we are way beyond past the time and we should uh, be conscious on people getting home tonight it's a rainy day to drive slow and safe so let's uh, transfer merits uh, can I get that book <coughs> It's in the, towards the last, it's that we use, <coughs> sharing merits. May suffering ones be suffering free, and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief, and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power, share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So thank you for coming. Yeah, you can try.